league MVP in the NBA, so the answer to this has to be false. <laughs> and the answer is <laughs> true. You had a 50-50 shot. <laughs> Look how happy Hembo is. What did he want, an 82? Yay. Happy birthday, Hembo. Happy birthday, buddy. What year did he win? What year 82. Did he win? 82, very good. That's okay, hilarious. That just made me happy. All right, this also makes me happy. Tiger Woods is back. Uh, he's playing today, his first uh, action since the Masters. He tees off at 12.50 Eastern at the Wells Fargo Championship, and he talked yesterday about what he has been and hasn't been doing since the Masters. Well, I threw my clubs in the, the closet for about 10 days. Uh, got away from the game, didn't touch a club, didn't make a golf swing. I've played a lot of golf into Augusta and, and more golf than I, I thought I would be able to play. And because this is all new and uh, it was nice to shut it down, reflect, analyze, uh, sit back and, and try and figure out what's the, the best course of action going forward so that I, I can win events. All right, Tiger's back, so let's talk a little golf and more. The pleasure of welcoming in ESPN the caddy. That's Michael Collins. <laughs> He's in Quail Hollow. What's on your mind, Michael? What a life. What's happening? Hey, Jalen, you know I love you, man, but I got to admit, Greeny's right. I didn't know Utah had a team. I figured that after Carl Malone and John Stockton shut it down, <laughs> they just closed the stadium and stopped playing basketball in Utah, my bad. <laughs> no, they got wow. Donovan Mitchell in there now. He's balling. Okay. That's funny. Michael, let's, let's talk about Tiger. Ain't nothing in between, Ooh. though. They ain't had nothing in between. <laughs> True. Let's, let's geek out a little with some uh, total golf geeks. Tiger has new irons in his bag. Oh, he's playing tailor-made irons now for the first time this week. How, how, how significant is that? And, and is, that, is there a learning curve there? Is that something that takes time for a pro to get comfortable with in tournament play? Well, okay, we're going to geek out, then I'm going to be geekily honest when it comes to golf. <laughs> Changing equipment, not nearly as big a deal when it comes to woods and irons as the golf ball. That's the thing that takes the longest for a professional golfer to get used to. Normally, it takes from changing a golf ball to winning about a year. Now, with irons, it's a little bit different. Of course, he's had these irons in his practice with him for a little bit, and yesterday, during the Pro-Am, as he was playing, he told one of the reps for TaylorMade, hey man, these are about a half a degree off. Now, we all laugh, half a degree, yeah, okay, like you can feel that. The rep took him to the truck, and what were they? Half a degree off, this dude's amazing. Amazing is exactly right. And, and so we're a week away from the players. We're a month away from the U.S. Open. What do you expect from Tiger this week and what do you expect from him going forward? Well, this week you have to remember, he's missed this tournament's cut the last two times that he played. That was 2012 and 2010. That's the bad news. The good news for Tiger is this golf course, completely different to the one that he played then and even different to the one that the guys who played in the PGA Championship last year at the end of 2017. That might give Tiger a little bit of an advantage. I think making the cut this week at this golf course would be a really good thing for Tiger. Tiger Woods and his new set of irons. All right, that's good insight. Michael, enjoy the golf, and we're going to get your tickets for game three in Salt Lake City. I think you'll really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. They're going to treat you like Russell Westbrook. You better be nice. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. As long as they got hot dogs, you can say what you want. <laughs> Time for sneaky big news. Uh, Woj reporting that the Phoenix Suns have hired Utah assistant coach Igor Kokoskov on a three-year contract, according to league sources. He becomes the first head coach born and raised outside of the U.S. in NBA history. We like it? I like it because he's a great basketball mind, and I think he has the opportunity to do a good job. But it also says something about the organization that they didn't want to invest in a current coach that's going to cost them a lot more on the open market. Isn't there something to be said, though, how much we always complain about, oh, that coaches, they recycle the same four or five names. It's nice to insert a new fresh team into this. It is, and, they, and, and the European style is really taking over basketball in a lot of different ways, and he's here to embody that. And hopefully someday he'll get to coach an NBA roster. Let's see how that wow. goes. Wow. <laughs> that, is, that is just rude. Uh, Five-star Duke commit Joey Baker reclassified for the 2018 season, announcing on Wednesday that he will enroll at Duke in the fall. He committed to the Blue Devils in October as a member of the 2019 class. That he'll graduate high school a year early and enter college sooner than expected. He's ranked number 15 in the ESPN 60 for 2019, 6'7", forward out of North Carolina. Jalen, can I ask you about this? Because this is the second time, second year in a row now that Duke has had this. Marvin Bagley did the same thing. I think a lot of people hear this and say, what does that mean? You're reclassifying from one year to another. 
So basically, he had the opportunity to either be a senior in high school or reclassify to become a freshman at Why? Duke what, to I mean, join this amazing My class. daughter doesn't have that opportunity. <laughs> what did he do? Right. So basically what happens in sports, and I don't know if this necessarily applies to Joey, but what a lot of people have done that specialize in basketball, they do something that's called gray shirting to their son or daughter, usually son, when they're in middle school. And what that means is if you're a seventh grader, instead of allowing you to go on to eighth grade, they hold you in seventh grade. Now, why will you do that? So a year later, you're older than the kids that you're playing against. You're more confident. And that one or two years makes a difference in your confidence, your productivity. Because ultimately, when you become a prospect for the NBA, it doesn't make much of a difference if you're 20 or 22. But if you're playing against guys that you're a couple of years older than, mm. it helps your not only your productivity, but it helps your stock. That's pretty interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, after years, years of fighting against the legalization of sports gambling, leagues are now open to the idea if it comes with a 2.5% integrity fee. The decline in MLB and NFL ratings are well documented, but the NBA doesn't seem to have that problem. Here's Adam Silver earlier on our show this year. We think we should be compensated in certain ways for the additional costs we're going to incur through, through various integrity measures. But on top of that, our league, just the NBA alone will spend seven and a half billion dollars this year creating this content. So our feeling as the intellectual property creators, we should be compensated as well. And so, but there are also issues on downside. I mean, I'm not, I'm trying to be more realist here rather than say, I think it's great for people to bet on sports. I know it'll lead to, to additional engagement, but there's problem gamblers too. And those are all things we need to address. There's, there's one thing about this that bothers me. I have been in favor of the legalization of sports gambling for as long as I've been able to understand what it meant. Um, I've never fully understood why the leagues refused to embrace it. I, I guess they didn't want to be caught up with, in the optics of it. The fact that they have stood, fight, and the NBA I would exclude from this conversation, but the fact that they have stood up fighting against it, we're totally against gambling, we want nothing to do with it. Oh, but we can get 2.5% of it, now we're in favor of it? That, that <laughs> kind of rubs me the wrong way. Having said that, I am fully in favor of legalized sports gambling. It's happening anyway. All of these things are happening anyway, so you might as well legalize it. There will be enormous revenue that will come not just to the leagues themselves, but to the states and municipalities in which this stuff takes place. So I am completely on board. I appreciate the fact that they called it an integrity fee. Yes. That's cute, right? I like that, that. That is awesome. And green. They have to be paid to have integrity. <laughs> no doubt. And I have some sneaky big news for you. They actually did embrace gambling. It's called fantasy sports. But they won't let you call it gambling. See, that's the difference. If you called it gambling, and I learned this firsthand, if you called it gambling, they had a problem with it. If you call it fantasy sports, <laughs> if you call it what it is, daily fantasy and all those things, which I love and I play, and I fully recognize that I'm gambling when I'm doing it, they will call you and tell you to stop calling it that. So that's the difference. They're telling you this isn't gambling, but we're making money on it. This is gambling, <laughs> so we're not going to be a part of it. But if we can get 2.5% of it, now we're all in. Again, that just kind of rubs you the wrong way, and it shows you you that money is ultimately well they'll, they'll buy anything that said yeah it's a good thing in my opinion not a bad thing so i'm not going to stand here and complain about it Anyone, I, I, do you I, don't, I, I don't have this is this falls under the umbrella of things adults do so i don't really think anyone should be telling us whether we can or cannot gamble i'm 100 percent for legalizing it you get to collect a tax it now becomes a, a, another form of income for states and everyone else so i, I don't i don't have a problem with it 2.5 2. percent of all bets placed that's going to be a ridiculous That's a number. That's a gigantic figure. A gigantic figure. It makes everything, it dwarfs things. And, and there will be a couple of people out there that think, how does this impact the athletes? Not at all. It doesn't. They're doing it anyway. No, it, it impacts <laughs> the athletes in one way. All that money comes in, ultimately, that goes into the salary cap that becomes a percentage of the, of the money, of the Correct. revenue that the sport is making, so the players will ultimately get some of that. All right, don't forget, tonight, 8.30 Eastern time, after Cavs and Raptors game two on ESPN. So Jalen and Beat will be here with a critical game, and no. then Scott Van Pelt will be along. we're out. And yeah. you'll be out. Scott Van Pelt and Rachel Nichols will be on with Sports Center and a complete breakdown of that game. You'll hear from LeBron James. You'll also get a, a recap of Tigers' first round at Quail Hollow at Sports Center with SVP, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. All right, still coming on Get Up. Carson Wentz working back from injury. Why he's not just spending time in the weight room. That'll be next with Sal Palantonio. Plus is one of the most prolific players in the game about to hang up the cleats 
for an even higher profile job. That answer is next. Liberty Mutual stood with me when this guy got a flat tire in the middle of the night, so he got home safe. <sighs> yeah, my dad says their insurance doesn't have that. What? You can leave worry behind when Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Do you have a drawer full of knives but nothing sharp? Stop crushing your food instead of cutting it. What a mess. And don't use fixed-edge sharpeners that grind.